You're listening to The Critical Thought, where we challenge our listeners to use critical thinking when examining the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm JT. And the purpose of this video is to speak to you about the Jehovah's Witnesses and the service department. JT, let's talk. The service department, mm -hmm. what is it and why should we care? Yeah. Uh, the service department is a very unique department at Bethel. Uh, it's probably one of the most important departments, uh, the service department, the writing department, and of course the treasury department. <laughs> um, but the service department is kind of unique because unlike the writing department that deals mainly with articles and writing and publication and doctrine, the service department is policy. Mm -hmm. They oversee the elders, ministerial servants, pioneers, uh, appointment of circuit overseers, the whole nine yards. But one of the most interesting aspects is they handle the judicial matters. Ah, so this links back to many of our earlier videos. Yes. So tell us about that interrelationship between the service department and judicial cases. What do you know about it? Well, one of the individuals who uh, was one of my mentors when I was at Bethel, uh -huh. he worked in the service department. He used to be a former district overseer. Of course, they no longer have the district overseer. They laid all those guys off. But he used to be a former district overseer. He was called into Bethel, and he was put into the service department. He was basically known as a society's troubleshooter. Okay. If the society was having problems anywhere in the United States, he would be often sent out to resolve those problems. And during that particular time, he actually had the authority to remove elders and appoint elders right on the spot. Mm. Today, we know they have basically moved that appointment of elders off the service department down to the local circuit overseer. So the local circuit overseer is handling all appointments, which means he'll take all the blame for anybody they appoint that turns out they have problems. But that's basically the role of the service department. Uh, they are policy, they put together the schools. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who come up with the rules mm -hmm. as to what the elders will do during a judicial case. So earlier this evening, when you were talking to me about one-offs, can you explain to our viewers what a one-off is, what you meant by that? Yeah. Uh, Many times uh, there is nothing, what, what is often referred to, there's nothing in print. Mm. There is no article that you can refer to. There's no publication that you can go to. So you, the elders will write the society. Mm. And the article, this particular question, will end up in the service department. And at that point, individuals who are assigned, because every congregation is assigned to someone in the service department. They have a map where they break up the whole United States, for example. And certain individuals in the service department, these are the three states they handle. Any correspondence from these states, they're the ones who will take care of it. And, it's a, and, and realistically, it's, it's considered a very prestigious department to work in. Okay. It's a very prestigious department to work in. Um, and so what they will do is they will provide an answer. And many times these answers are one-off. You won't find this answer in print. It will only be in the correspondence from the society. Mm -hmm. And they many times will tell you, you know, this is something that is not, you know, this is just for your congregation, your situation, don't discuss this basically. But this one time exception wouldn't be published or made public to no, the it would not. overall witness congregation it would, globally. No, it would be for this specific person, their specific case, a one off. The service department is kind of unique because they handle all of these types of cases, and especially the ones that are, we hear about now in the court system and that is the pedophile cases. Mm. That is a department that collects all the data on that. Um, and so this is, a, this is a department that plays a major role in the lives of witnesses. So is the service department really the secret department? Like the secret service doing secret <laughs> things? I mean, do we, I don't know. Most folks don't know about this. Well, you have to remember the organization does things on as need to know basis. So if you are not an elder, you don't need to know what's going on down there. And the average friend will not know what's going on, what things the service department handles. And that's what makes the organization kind of unique because these individuals and the elders who correspond with them, you have your privilege of things that nobody else knows. So you're not gonna tell anybody. So scripturally or organizationally, how, how did they reconcile these things? They don't have to. What you talking about? They don't have to. And they, that's not an issue that they worry about. This is, this once again, we go back to what we went to before. This is an organizational structure. Mm -hmm. And everyone accepts it and moves on. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it's, it's really a fascinating group. Um, they, they literally impact the lives of Jehovah's Witnesses all around the world. Each country that has a branch office, typically, many times, if it's large enough, will have its own service department. 
because they're having so many issues to handle in that country. If it's not, it goes to another country. But the main service department is the one based in the United States. And all the other service departments basically have to get their rulings and their directions from the main service department. They are given some autonomy, mm -hmm. uh, but generally everything feeds back into New York. Wow. Wow. Yeah. The secret department. <laughs> he calls it the service department. One-off decision-making yeah. that is not put on paper mm -hmm. for the overall general body, consumption. for general consumption. No, not general consumption. Yeah, for people who have been reproved as fellowship or had any of those types of issues, uh, your information is transferred to this department. Mm -hmm. Elders send in the letters. Everything is recorded. And this is where it's becoming a big issue, as we mentioned before, with the uh, personal identifier information. Uh, these, these things concern the society greatly because now court systems are asking for these records, mm -hmm. these documents. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, the service department is literally having to turn over to the court systems all of these confidential files. So, JT, let me mm -hmm. ask you one final question. Sure. Does the average Jehovah's Witness have any interaction with the service department? Well, generally, no. Generally, no. But the way that many individuals have actually had interaction with the service department and didn't even realize it mm. is what happens when a Jehovah's Witness may be upset, may be concerned about certain things that's going on, may feel the brothers are not doing certain things right, uh, mistreating them, whatever. Sometimes witnesses will say, well, since the brothers in my congregation are not helping me, mm -hmm. I'm going to write the society because the brothers in New York, they will understand me. Mm -hmm. Well, typically what happens if you write a letter to the society, especially if it's a letter of that nature, it actually oftentimes ends up in the service department. Mm -hmm. The individual brother Bethel who is over that state, for example, he will get the letter at his desk. His secretary will open it up, forward it to him in his office. And they will respond back, not only to you, but to the body of elders as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen this happen. People will write a letter into the society, have no idea that their letter is going to be carbon copied, their original letter, mm -hmm. as well as the response the society gave, mm -hmm. along with some interesting little notes down in the bottom to the body of elders. Mm -hmm. So the person has no idea that when he walks into the kingdom hall, the elders have a copy of your letter. They know everything you said about them mm -hmm. by name, date, everything. Mm -hmm. And at this point, the elders are looking at your letter. They're looking at the society's instructions. And so now what you thought was highly confidential, all your business is out now. Exposed. Exposed completely. Mm -hmm. I'm Daniel. I'm JT. And the purpose of this video was to educate you about the secret department. Well, the service department. If this video is helpful to you, Help someone else. Share with a family member, a friend. Share a video. Change a life. Save a life. Hey, this is Lady C. Thank you for tuning in to The Critical Thought. We appreciate having you in our audience. Not only that, but we invite you to subscribe to our channel and be sure to hit that bell so that you can receive notifications when we upload new content. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Thank you for being in our audience. This program was sponsored by Critical Thinkers.